There's a 1,000 times we've discussed this show, but today we'll be talking about something that you would have never guessed. Bridgerton Season 1 had over 5,000 costumes. Oh yes, you heard us. Isn't this... Um, we really can't find a word for it. Nuts? But also, we can't stop drooling over them either. Don't you just want to go back, rewatch the whole thing, and count the costumes? No? Guess we'll have to give you the deets. First off, what were they thinking when they made 5,000 costumes? Well, the thing is that it's the period drama, and you guys know how seriously the people of old took their dressing. Not to mention, there weren't any stores that they could just go and pick outfits from. These had to be specifically tailored for them. When Bridgerton came to our screens, wasn't this the first thing we all noticed? The gorgeous dresses the ladies wore, and the way men were clad in proper attire, all took a lot of time to put together. The costume designer behind this brilliant show, Ellen Moroshnik, has created extensive wardrobes for several other movies, and she really gave this season her all. From extravagant pieces to elegant gowns, we saw it all in this show. Since the season is heavily focused on the elites of London, it was a given that they'd all be clad in the finest clothes with the blingiest jewels, constantly trying to outdo the others. With that in mind, Ellen got to work and created a 7,500 wardrobe, all individual pieces, in just five months. We gotta say, that sounds like a lot of work to do, and kudos to her for being able to come up with 7,500 different designs. What a genius, man. But she wasn't alone in compiling these clothes. There was a team of 238 people by her side, working tirelessly to pull the job off. Doesn't this sound like crazy fun? Let's look at how they went about this. Of course, we all want to know this. Well, as the costume designer told the leading publication, there was a department of everything. So now we know what the team of 238 people was all about. Explaining more, she said, this is inclusive of the pattern cutters. The extraordinary Mr. Pearl was our corset maker, a tailoring department, an embellishing department, embroiderers, and my co-captain, John Glasser, among others. Over 5,000 costumes were ready before shooting even started. That's what focus looks like, folks. And if the designer's word is anything to go by, Phoebe Dinovore, who plays Daphne Bridgerton, was dressed in 104 outfits so that the look could be tested on camera. She did say that these many dresses were quite too much, even for the lead of the season. And we've to say we agree. But can you guys imagine what a nightmare it might have been for the actual debutants in the 1800s? The sort of grandness they must have felt. We love everything about that era, if we're being honest. We do think that the actual women of that time wouldn't be getting 104 dresses made for a single season, but it does add to the charm. No? The sort of fabric used, experimenting with layers, we pest the costume department had a ball putting outfits together. If only we could spend a day on set. We'll be keeping our fingers crossed, just in case. Up next, the costumes weren't really historically accurate. But who cares, right? As long as we get to see everyone looking regal and prim. But the truth is that, unlike other era shows, the makers wanted this to stand out. And what better way to catch someone's attention than to dress for it? The dresses are sc with a lot more skin showing that would have been seen as appropriate at that time. The men are dressed in gorgeous colors too, with printed waistcoats and all that. It's all very creatively trashy if you ask us. The plunging neckline seen in the show would never be allowed in that era, but the costume people have made sure that everyone looks their best and is pretty sexy, we've to add. The cuts are classy and everyone looks quite at ease, not like they're struggling with their clothes as we see in most periods movies. All of it is a visual treat, and we just want to tell Ellen that she and her team have done a phenomenal job, and we cannot wait to see more of their magic. Finally, colors played a major role in this show. Time and time again, color has been used to make a point, be it as dresses or walls or elements. The bottom line is that colors impact our senses, and in the case of Bridgerton, it has allowed viewers to classify society. We see that families with old money are always dressed in hints of color, powdery blues, tea pinks, silvers, and the palest of greens, it gives them a look of divinity, allowing them to look so pure and apart from the rest. Did you guys
always notice how when Daphne became a duchess, her outfits became richer, pinks and blues, and deep silvers were added to her wardrobe. On the other side, the Featheringtons, shown as people with new money, were always dressed in loud and outrageous colors. Even the way they accessorize is different. This is to show the difference in the approach of the two classes in society. The Featheringtons might have the money, but they'll never have the class that the Bridgertons have because that only comes with time. Even the Sharma sisters were dressed in jewel-colored dresses to amplify their Indian roots. There's so much a little color can change, and these guys have used it in the best way. Let's talk about the latest news and updates. First up, Bridgerton reveals the title of the first episode of Season 3. Oh my god. Oh my god! It's called Out of the Shadows, and in a sus way, Netflix surprised its viewers by sneaking a reading by none other than Nicola Coughlin, aka Penelope Featherington, in their tundem featurette. The video has Luke Newton, aka Colin Bridgerton, and Claudia Jesse, aka Eloise Bridgerton, painting each other's portraits as they chat about their characters. If that wasn't enough, we see Nicola come into the scene, pick up the script, and begin reading the opening lines. And it started with Dear Gentle Reader. That's how all the episodes in the seasons open and close. If you haven't seen it, do look it up. Both the title and script opening has given us a lot of ideas. Both the title and script opening has given us a lot of ideas. The title suggests that Lady Whistledown might be coming out of the shadows. It could also be a hint at Colin and Penelope's love story, which has been pretty dormant but is bound to make a lot of noise this season. As the Bridgerton sibling finally realizes his feelings for her, all in all, we can't wait to find out what they've in store for us. Coming to Nicola's response to the changes in Season 3. We really thought that by now we'd be on the same page when it comes to TV shows diverting from the source material, but we were wrong. It seems that people are getting pretty upset that Season 3 is now taking a life of its own. While the stories are pretty much the same, the makers have decided to feature Colin Bridgerton's romance before that of Eloise Bridgerton, and that's making the fans, well, pretty upset. And we get it because it does seem unfair, but we also believe that Claudia Jesse's character needs a little more depth before her story begins. Also, the viewers have been shipping Colin and Penelope for ages now, and it did seem unwise to keep them stringing along, don't you think? To be honest, most fans are divided on this, and both sides are justified. However, we'd like to remind everyone that there will be another season, and then another until all the siblings have found love. It might just take a little longer to get to everyone's favorite sibling, but we're heading in the right direction, so don't fret. Lastly, Bridgerton Season 3 is not on the horizon. For this year, whilst most fans were thinking that we'd definitely be streaming Season 3 this month, it looks like we might be well into 2023 by the time Bridgerton returns. The fact that it was renewed in April this year could be a major factor in the delay. To be honest, a couple of months aren't enough to shoot this story. We mean the prompting and clothes alone would take ages. The shooting is going, so we do know that it's in production. And that's a major relief. There have been rumors that spring 2023 would be the time when hearts begin to bloom, and oh how we're waiting for those days. There's other news though. New characters are joining the series, so we'll have a lot more stories to dissect. Actors Daniel Francis, Sam Phillips, and James Foon are now part of the series, and they're playing quite interesting characters. Francis will be playing a charismatic Marcus Anderson in a possible love interest for Penelope, while Phillips will be Lord Deving, a cheerful soul with unusual interests, and Foon will be seen as a handsome but silly Harry Dankworth. That's a wrap for this video. Did you guys know that season one of Bridgerton alone had over 5,000 costumes? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and press that bell icon for the latest information and news like this. See you in the next one!